Pate. We're here at the Medical Health Center Denver at their Dahlia campus where we'll be checking out their aquaponics system. So starting out, in here we have the two different species of fish being grown. We have one catfish in this right uh, fit AST tank. FIT stands for filter in tank, so these are pretty nice because they're square, so they're really space conservative compared to round tanks or D-shaped tanks. Um, and the, the filter is actually built into the tank, which we can see in a little bit. And on this side, we have tilapia. So this is the first spot in our plant's life. Here we'll take these trays, which have a coca choir and peat moss mix. Um, and what we'll do is we'll seed each of these trays either by hand or using an automatic seeder. They'll be wetted in a, a small nutrient flow of water that flows down along the trough. And they'll start out here for the first uh, roughly three weeks of their life before being transplanted over um, to the rest of the system. Now, as you see there, the water will flow in. Now this tank is separate from the rest of the system and that's just because it only requires a little bit of water. So we actually have our separate sump um, and this system is completely off length from the rest. So this is the next st stage in our uh, plant's life. So after being started off in the plug trays, once they get up after a week or two and they start getting their true leaves, they'll be transplanted into these lattice rafts. Um, so these are just uh, the lattices that you use at your garden um, on some styrofoam blocks. And that will allow us to do about 50 of these plugs per two by two foot section. And from here, they'll last in here about another two weeks and then be transplanted into the rest of our system. So these are our deep water culture troughs. Here we have roughly 1,600 square feet of uh, grow space for the DWCs, which will allow us to have roughly 6,000 plants per, at a time um, and roughly produce 60,000 plants a year if we you know, factor in a 10, 10 harvest in a year. And so here we start off at the far end where the guys are younger and they'll slowly move the rafts forward down to this final stage where they'll be harvested um, either as the whole plant or just pieces which will then be either sold to restaurants um, and the profits from that help kind of keep this in operation and then the other, the rest of the produce is either given away and donated to the community uh, through food trucks that the MCDH works with. Um, and then the rest of it is given to the, the patients here at the Medical Health Center Denver. So here we focus mostly on leafy greens because those are generally more profitable in aquaponics opposed to like fruiting crops which have a longer grow up period. So they grow several different types, um, you know, just to kind of focus on a diversity of the crops and that way they don't have to sell all of one type of lettuce, they have a multi-faceted step of things. Um, and some of the things we're growing here are some basil. We have two different varieties. One's this purple basil and one's this Genova basil. We have some mescaline lettuce. We have collard greens, red Russian kale, some blue dwarf kale, and also some Swiss chard and a few different varieties of pak choy. So quite a few, few things are grown here, which helps us, uh, you know, get a good diversity of crops to sell to our community. So these are our quarantine and purge tanks. Here what we'll do is when we get our fish in, um, we'll stick them in a quarantine tank and treat them to make sure that they don't have any illnesses or anything before entering our system to prevent any uh, pathogens or anything that we don't want from entering there. And we also have our purge tanks. So here we will take tilapia or the catfish that are ready to be harvested. We'll leave them in here for roughly three days to a week um, where they won't get any food. This is salt water. So that salt will naturally kind of uh, go into the flesh and help flavor the meat a little bit and kind of, uh, they say crispen up the, the flesh. But then also this allows us to get all the solids out of the system, out of the fish's system, and gives, give us a cleaner taste when we're cooking up our product.
So this is a small system that's a, a part of the farm. Um, it is separate, but generally, you know, with a lot of aquaponics producers, they like to have some flexibility in what they're growing. So this gives the farmers uh, the ability to test out new crops that they might be interested in or kind of play around. So here we have our fish tank. From here, the water flows into a swirl filter where the uh, portion of the solids are able to be settled to the bottom and then discharged daily. The, r the clean water will then flow into the sump. From the sump, it is pumped up in actually two directions and teed off. So uh, the majority of the water will go to the fish tank, which will allow a good water exchange for our fish. And then a small amount of the water will go to the plants. Um, and then this feeds all the way through the plant beds and then back into the sump where the water is just continuously recirculated. Here we have several different crops. We have some rosemary, we have some chives, some tomatoes, some other things, some spinach down there. And again, this just gives uh, the growers a little bit of flexibility in what they're, what they're producing. So here are our environmental controls. We have several different buttons which will allow you to either turn them on to be manually operated or automatic. So what happens is outside of our greenhouse, we have a weather monitor which will detect the daily light that is being shown here, uh, as well as the temperature, the humidity, the wind speed, and a few different things. And with those factors, what it'll do is relay it to this computer, and that will then uh, cause some different things to activate in our greenhouse. One of the things with like humidity or temperature, which can be an issue, is it will either increase the amount of air being pulled out or reduce the amount of air being pulled out, depending on what you know is trying to be achieved. Um, and then another function is with our light monitor, it will actually turn these shade cloths above our greenhouse and cause them to open up, which will allow us to block out daylight in case you know we're getting too much and it's going to be too harmful to our plants. And those can all be adjusted, and then those are recorded in real time and uh, delivered to a computer where the data is stored for several months until uh, you know either we're finished with the data or until we've done what we needed to with it. So this is our evaporative cooling wall, also known as a swamp cooler or a wet wall. Basically what happens is the water will travel down this corrugated um, paper-like material that's made out of a, a certain type of tree. Um, and basically what happens as the air flows through there, it will evaporate the water and then cool it down the air and then keep our greenhouse at a nice cool temperature for our plants. Now this is only good in low humidity environments. The higher your environment is, the less effective these are. But in a place like Texas or here in Colorado, it works great as a way of uh, cheaply cooling this greenhouse.